Hey guys, Rick with Rick's Toy Room. I am decided to do this Collector 101 video. It's actually going to be really, really short, um, but it needs to happen. So uh, I tended to do this video a few months back, and I thought that it wasn't going to be long enough to warrant a video. This one's not going to be long enough to warrant a video, but I do want to call it out. I do want to talk about this as a collector video because I want collectors to know what in the world is going on when it comes to finding error cards or um, error Hot Wheels or any type of error. This this goes to all action figures. This goes to die cast. It doesn't matter what you collect or what you buy into. There is always a chance of getting a factory error, which tend to hold a little bit more value to certain collectors. Um, and I've talked about this in the Collecting 101 video when I went over terminology and talking about variants and errors um, and repacks. We talked about that in the terminology terminology video and I explained some of it. Um, you know, the biggest, the biggest rush for variants was absolutely the Star Wars Power of the Force two line as well as the like 97 through 99 Hot Wheels where quality control coming out of Asia was just trash. Uh, you had so many variants of Boba Fett and uh, decals and Jedis with long and short sabers and long trays and short trays and Hot Wheels and different base colors and different interior colors and missing tampos like variants and rare cars ran rampant between 97 and 99. Again, every toy line had it. Every toy line, somebody was looking for an error, a variant, and these things were fetching huge money. Well, nowadays, first we realize and have come to the conclusion that QA problems aren't necessarily super valuable. We also know that there are certain people that collect specific things or they have a specific, like, genre that they collect so they collect errors and variants and stuff like this i'm one of them if i know about a variant i'm going to look for it if i find an error i'm going to keep it um like i don't like i collect all of it right but more and more recently and this so much so with you know ebay and macari and secondary market where you know that these people that collect variants and errors can potentially push your auction up or your sale up to a significant increase in price because of it being a variant or error. Um, I'm going to focus right now on Hot Wheels. Again, these principles do go across every collecting line and this can be seen in every line, but I'm going to focus on Hot Wheels because I have some really good examples right now that I want to show in this video. So more and more, obviously, if money can be made, someone's going to scam, okay? And I'm not saying every variant you find, every error you find is a scam, but I am going to give you an idea on the first thing you should be looking for the moment you find what seems to be an error or a variant, okay? And that is tampering. So we talked about this in another video, but when the Hot Wheels, and I think actually it was the terminology video when I'm talking about bubbles and how they attack a car to bubble, etc. But when a Hot Wheel, and please tell me I have one here. I don't. Sad face. Um, don't. Okay. I'm going to go get one. Just stay here. Go figure, the one top in the closet is a Barbie car. So, all right. When the, qu the quick taxonomy of a, of a collectible item that is on a bubble or carded um, is this, right? So you can cons this is considered a carded collectible. It's called carded because the cardboard display packaging backing is cardboard and the item is affixed to said board with a plastic clear bubble and it is heat pressed against the the card. So there is a set of adhesion that is put on the bubble. The card is laid on it. It is pressed across. Heat seal comes down, seals this glue, gets it real tight, and that you have a carded product, okay? Well, 
and again back in the back you know in the 90s we uh people that were trying to fraudulently swap out uh variant hot wheels and variant uh, rare versions of the boba fett's and the jedi's there was a huge run of scandalous and fraudulent tampered with bubbled products there are a couple different ways you can do this. The first way is you just rip the bubble off, you do whatever you gotta do, you put it back, you glue it, call it a day. It's very sloppy, it's very easy to be seen. Uh, what they started getting good at is some people would take an X-Acto knife and they'd run the X-Acto knife right down the card, right between the bubble and the card, and they would split the glue, and then they would remove the car, do whatever they had to do, or remove the action figure, swap the lightsabers, whatever, put it back down, and then they would glue whatever part they cut off. Some of these guys would be really good and they would do the whole bubble. Some of these guys realized that it was very hard to reattach this in a way that couldn't be seen. So they would only do parts of a bubble. Um, the problem is that's still left for a good portion of tearing on the paper. In Korea, let's fast forward a few steps and two of the most common ways of removing the bubble from the card is to apply Zippo lighter fluid on the edge of the card in which the bubble's attached. So you would take Zippo lighter fluid, you'd run it just a little bit, about what, inch here, two inches here, inch here, two inches here, and you'd let it air dry. And as the Zippo lighter fluid would soak through the cardboard, it would make its way to the bubble, it would get to the glue, and it would cause the glue to essentially dissolve and separate from the card. Now. That was, was one of the biggest ways. The other way is to take a heat gun and heat the card, get the glue to come very tacky, release it, reseal it. Uh, the part of the problem with the heat solution was that um, before like real good, cheap industrial uh, heat guns could be purchased, they would actually melt the bubble and they would cause discoloration on the glue. So a lot of people stuck with acetone, um, Zippo lighter fluid, we found that, and I say we because I've done it, uh, we found that Zippo lighter fluid actually left the least amount of physical and visible damage. So when you use acetone or you use um, uh, nail polish remover, it would actually discolor the card. It would actually bleed the ink on the card. And we found that again, Zippo lighter fluid would soak through, do the least amount of damage uh, you could almost not tell. There was no discoloration to the card when it dried properly. If you didn't try to you know, accelerate the drying process or accelerate the bubble removal, you could get a bubble off with almost no damage. The problem is there were still, and there still is, tall tell signs of tampering, okay? So and I bring this up because I'm gonna show you photos of this guy that just posted in the Hot Wheels Collectors Group on Facebook this chrome Batmobile with no tampos on it. And he's like, hey, I just bought this. And it's always this, I'm gonna say this with a grain of salt, and if this is you, don't take offense to it, but it always tends to be some bullshit story about, hey, I bought this car in a lot. Now, sometimes these guys, scammers, will mix in these variants in a whole lot, like, oh, I got this whole lot with this variant, so it's gonna cost more for the lot, yada, yada, yada. You know, the variant's gonna cost X amount of dollars, I'm gonna give you this deal, so like all the regulars. It's always some bullshit story, right? And um, it's always like that. Or you, again, recently we see people are swapping cars at the store, and they're doing very similar tactics. They are removing the bubble in some fashion, they're swapping the car, Maybe they're turning it around. Maybe they're taking out a more valuable card, putting in a much cheaper car. They're gonna reseal the bubble and they're gonna put it back on the shelf. Now, how we used to do resealing the bubble and one of the easiest ways and cheapest ways is Elmer's glue. You can use Elmer's school glue, the pure white stuff. You would take it your finger, you would dip it across the bubble. You'd very carefully place it down. You'd hold it until it dried. And for the first couple years, it's gonna dry clear you're not gonna notice it. Uh, the problem with Elmer's glue we found is as the years passed, it was very temperamental to temperature swings and anybody that had a card that was tampered with back in the day, they take them out of their collection now and you can see where the glue has changed to a yellow color or it has started to flake away because it wasn't designed to be a long-term adhesive. 
technically none of this is, but especially Elmer school glue is not a long-term adhesive. But what we also would find is the text would get screwed up. And I'm gonna tell you right now, if you, and the person that did this Batmobile, by the way, you could tell they've done this enough times, but not, they weren't good at it. They knew well enough to only remove part of the bubble to get the car out because aligning the entire bubble to this card in a way that can't be told, can't at first glance be noticed is difficult, okay? <laughs> Take it from me, it takes practice to be able to get that bubble lined up on the entire 360, you know, spin of it that it doesn't look like or appear it's been tampered with. The cool thing about Mattel is that they always have really colorful packaging. Every package designer has really good colorful packaging and there's always some form of the design that goes underneath the bubble and these are perfect places to look for tampering. So this photo is a clear example of alteration because you can see that the lettering on the number 15 is completely shifted. And because of the way these are manufactured, they don't print onto the card after the bubble. There's no way attaching the bubble at the factory is going to interfere with the graphics below, unless for some reason it dug into the machine, but even then, it's not how the machine works. So the first tell telltale sign is if you look at this photo, you can see that the 15 is shifted because the guy did not align the paper right. And this happens when you rush using the adhesion removal steps and it causes the paper to tear because you haven't removed all the glue. Uh, second, you can see where the guy crushed the bubble and yes, bubble damage happens in shipping and on store shelves, etc. but it is literally only crushed and pinched at the nose where all the paper tearing's at. So from a, from a position of knowing how this is done, this joker removed the glue, peeled the bubble, dropped the car, play with it, stuffed the car back in, and then try to crunch the bubble back and re reattach. The problem with only doing one side, now most tamperers, especially with Hot Wheels, they will do the long side. So they will do three of the four, leaving the top to be basically their guide for getting this bubble off and reattaching it with little to no evidence that it's been tampered with. Um, this guy only did two quarters, and because of this, because of the, only taking the side out here, uh, he basically screwed the paper up. He misaligned it. He couldn't get it completely lined up. You'll also notice now, this one is not a tampered with Hot Wheel. I know I say I tamper with them in. Um, you'll notice how the glue was not fully adhered all the way across the bubble. So if you look around the rest of the bubble, it is a one solid color from the uh, compression and the heat of the manufacturing process, except for like this corner here. Uh, and then this top here has this open gap where there was no adhesion. And this is actually part of the manufacturing process. Basically, they leave a gap for like air to leave, expansion, etc., to happen. When they do these special editions like this, you'll see this way more common where parts just don't get glued all the way because the factory is just really trying to knock these out to make a particular shipping date. Specifically, you know, especially with Barbie because it had to meet the, the movie release. Uh, and of course, you know, Mattel's got to get their tie-ins out quick. So very noticeable on all the Barbie cars. If you look at a general mainline, you'll see a much smaller adhesion gap at the very top from where they get put in, they're pushed down, they're heat sealed, the heat and the expansion doesn't make it to the end. They want that air to get out so the bubbles don't pop, so they don't get ripped up in uh, manufacturing and transportation. But this guy's Batmobile is a clear sign of tampering. Now, I had at one point when I was gonna do this video the first time, more examples, but maybe I'll find some more, maybe I won't. Uh, feel free to send me photos of a car you think that has been tampered with, and I will absolutely help you look at it and point it out. But the naked eye with this particular Batmobile, you can see that the tape, that the paper was ripped, the text was not aligned, it was tampered with. Uh, you'll see, you'll notice anybody that spends a significant amount of time, guys that do customs, a lot of these guys will actually just do a whole new custom card 
and then they'll reattach the bubble and it'll just look factory sealed. People that are messing with tampos that are doing swaps, you see this a lot with the Star Wars and GI Joes. Um, you know, they will take their time to cut the tape, remove it, uh, maybe use a new piece of tape. Sometimes you'll see double tape where they taped over the original piece and they lined it up just right, but you can see the second piece under it if you're looking really closely. Um, if you feel that your, your, your collectible has been tampered with, phones nowadays have phenomenal zoom functions and super close macro cameras built in. Since what, the iPhone 11, iPhone 10 had macro camera. You can actually get the macro lens activated. You can really look at almost a microscopic style like zoom function and you'll be able to see like you're looking for tears in the paper because again, manufacturing does a heat press. The paper is only in contact with the glue temporarily and these things don't shift when they, they don't attach them like running up a machine. Like they are set, they are pressed, released, moved, next one, right? Um, so there's almost, and of course, like I said, I can't, I don't, I've never tested every Hot Wheel, so I'm not gonna say this has never happened, but from a factory perspective, you will never see the card back damaged during the, the attachment of a bubble. You will see bubbles attached upside down. You will see cars put in upside down. You will see action figures upside down. You will see bubbles cockeyed because maybe it came off the way it came off the line. 100%, but you will never see that paper torn. So if you want to look for a, a tampered with product, if you're like, hey, I got this car, it's got no tampos, or this isn't the right car for the package, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna look at where the color breaks in the card art touch the uh, touch the glue for the bubble and look for tears in the paper. Smallest tear is going to be a sign that it's been removed. Now, can it happen where they sit in a case, they get banged around, they're on the shelf, banged around by collectors and by kids, and it tears the paper under the bubble? And that be manufactured? Yes, but you won't see the vehicle typically or the toy typically tampered with. You won't see it being an error. The chances of it being an air, factory error or factory variation that also got banged around and the card ripped at store before you got your hands on it, you have a better chance of hitting that $800 million Mega Millions tonight than you're gonna have of finding that scenario in a store. So definitely look, again, when you first get a variant or you get an error, the first thing you wanna look for is that paper, right? Look at that seal, look at the bubble, look where it connects. Does this look like it's been peeled up? You will see, and I was showing you this on this Barbie car, and unfortunately this is just really crappy quality control by Mattel. I'm gonna turn the light on because I just lost the sun. Um, but you can see even on this corner that the bubble is actually like lifted. It's got, there's a, there it is. There's that just slight discoloration where the bubble didn't fully heat seal to the package, probably due to either uh, incorrect glue flow or just not a, a good, you know, adhesion pinch point on the machine when it came out. Top is normally fine. It's always on the edges and the bottoms that if you start seeing that discoloration, if you see like that picked up, it could be because the card's been bent. Uh, this case, the card wasn't bent. It was just really crappy quality control. But look for these things. You want to look for where the glue is not evenly pressed against the card. You want to look for, I mean, you can see where those yellow lines go underneath that bubble. If these lines did not line up, if the yellow was kind of, if one part of the yellow line is on the white coloring, highly probable this car was tampered with. And the person that did it did not have enough patience to make sure they used enough solvent to remove the glue, to take it off carefully off the card back, to reattach it carefully, to take his time lining things up. Um, that's, that, that, that's how you tell if the car's been tampered with. So use this guy's example, take it as a lesson, these are the things you should look for. And again, if you want some help, I can't, I don't have enough tampered, I don't, first off, deal in tampered cars. I don't remove cars from the bubble and do customizations anymore. So I don't have uh, a lot of examples here that I can show you. But if you find one, you're like, hey, I'm not sure. Let's get some close up photos. Let's do a little around all the edges. Let's look at the colors. I'll help you out. Uh, DM me the photos. We'll take it from there. But Hopefully this video helps you when you walk into a store and you see a Corvette on a Bugatti card and you're like, I found an error. 
Check to make sure some Joker didn't card swap you and bring it back. We're seeing this really, really bad right now in the G.I. Joe realm. Hasbro did this and screwed us as collectors when they stopped allowing window packaging. Collectors have been buying uh, G.I. Joe Classified off Amazon. They've been buying them at Walmart. They're taking them home. They're cutting the tape. They're pulling the figures out because a lot of these classified guys, for whatever reason, collect loose. Um, they're taking the figures out and they're putting trash back in the package. They're putting random toys in the package. I think one guy got like a baby chew toy out of one that I saw in one of the G.I. Joe forums where he bought it off Amazon, opened it up, and it was baby chew toys that were chewed on. Um, so Hasbro screwed us with that. So it's harder to tell when you buy a, a sealed package like that. Like you got to really look at the tape and try to argue that with Amazon. It's almost impossible. Um, but for anything that you can see through the bubble, you get a visual of the connection to the card. That is how you can see if it's been tampered with. So Hopefully this video gave you a little bit of information. Maybe A, how to remove the bubbles and do customizations. B, how people have frauded you. Uh, check your check your old collections to see if you have any with Elmer's glue that is starting to flake, break, and change colors. And maybe you'll find out you got screwed years ago. I don't know. But that's it for this video, guys. It ended up being longer than I thought. Um, appreciate it. As always, like, share, subscribe, follow. Hit me up if you have any questions. Tell me if you've ever bought yourself a tampered with fraud car or if you found yourself a really cool error. I'd like to see your variants. So, um, yeah, that's it. And I got a puppy. All right, guys, I got to go.